Stay tuned. The live will be starting soon. Get ready for change as Prophetess Miranda delivers a word of healing and deliverance. Here are a few announcements while you wait. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified when Prophetess is live. Join us on the Prophetic View conference call at 5 a.m. Central Standard Time. You don't want to miss the powerful word that goes forth. Prophetess Miranda's new book called Prophetic War and Decree will teach you how to war and decree for your breakthrough. This book is guaranteed to make you a warrior and step into the place God has called you to be. To purchase the book and get information on upcoming healing and deliverance services and events, make sure to visit our main website at prophetessmiranda.com. If you would like to give to the ministry, visit our website or text the word GIVE to 504 500 4776. Do you need mentorship? Prophetess is accepting applications for the Sears Group program for prophetic mentorship. Visit our website today to sign up. Stay connected with the ministry by joining us on YouTube. For more information, visit our website to submit prayer request, send a message to Prophetess, and more. Visit our prophetic school and get access to detailed e-courses by Prophetess Miranda to help you walk through your prophetic walk with God. Would you be interested in joining Prophetess Miranda in person? Explore our website to find out if she will be visiting a city near you. Prophetess Miranda's ministry is centered around three main hubs, New Orleans, Louisiana, as well as Charlotte and Chapel Hill, North Carolina. She frequently travels to various states and cities, so be sure to visit the website for updates on her upcoming visits to a city near you. So grateful. You know, it didn't have to be me that he saved. Oh, but y'all don't understand that. Y'all got that favor dripping off y'all. Well, you know what? I didn't always have that. I guess I had it. It was stored in the heaven. I just had to get in line. Oh, but it makes me want to go deeper. Do you know you could decree that to your spirit man and make your spirit man come alive? Who know y'all going to shake off these grave clothes in here? Wait, do I need them to come do grave clothes? Hold up. Do we need to be? Yeah, look like we need. Wait, because y'all would. <laughs> deeper brings you into a greater gratitude. Don't y'all know? Y'all in Prophetess Miranda's ministry. We lay on the floor. We don't care what you got. We just want you to know Jesus. Oh, yeah, the best thing around here is in the corner looking and crying out to Jesus. You're free here. No bondage here. All liberation. Nobody coming to put you under bondage. Nobody trying to tell you your gift's better than mine. And who do you? Oh, no. It's not allowed here. We free people. People come here to be free. Oh, y'all don't just understand. Let me just tell you some of the things we got prepared for you today. So again, let me just welcome you to Prophetess Miranda's ministry. Anybody here who has never been in one of our services, I know there's many of you all. Can I get everybody else to stand and let the ones that has never been here, let them stand? Yes. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for choosing to fellowship with us today. I pray that you get an experience with Jesus. See, I already see that the hand of the Lord said to tell you provision has already been made. Already been made. And see, you're trying to get the pattern for your life. But see, this pattern, he's made. He said, just chill out and rest. Oh, do you know what it is just to rest? Oh, I got a blessing for you today, too. I'm going to sow into your life. Yeah, I want to sow into that child before that child gets here. See, y'all don't know how to get blessings. See, I sow where I need to go. You don't understand? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Why don't you all tell me where you're from? If you could just... Are you locally or not? You know, any, people show up from every, anywhere at our services. We never know. So, I'm sorry? North Carolina? Okay. You got to, you got to tell me about that. 
Okay. Charlotte, okay. Oh, Georgia, but from Michigan. Both of them, praise the Lord. <laughs> okay, yes. Virginia. Well, come, let's give Virginia a hand. Isn't that awesome? That is awesome. You can be seated as I speak to you. Yes. Maryland. You know, we're trying to get back to D.C. We're really trying to get there. <laughs> you pray us there because we love it there. We do, but welcome. Yes. Okay, well, you know, New York is my place. Anybody's listened to my videos, y'all know. Um, I, I don't know what, I wouldn't be surprised if the clouds bust open and when I get to New York. <laughs> I, I expect it, I do. God bless you, welcome. Columbia, South Carolina. All right, South Carolina. Virginia. Virginia, okay, uh, Virginia taking over today. I just want y'all to know that. Virginia, <laughs> okay. So why don't we just wait and just hold up and see where they're from? <laughs> yes, sir. Birmingham, okay. Wait, what did he say in the beginning? I love it. Absolutely. Welcome, man of God. Yes. Charlotte, okay. Atlanta, Georgia. Go ahead, Haiti, the Lord. Oh, we send blessings to Haiti. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's give them a hand. I want you to know that you are welcome here. And when I say that we are free people, I really mean that. If you release the spirit of expectation and you set in your heart what is it that you're seeking God for, Anything in your life that you know you're wrestling with. We, we are called, well, they say we're the demon busters, but I don't say that. I say we are God's people that just might be anointed with the mantle of deliverance. And we're excited about that. I sweeten it up a little bit. So let me say this to you. Today our word is going to be spiritual intelligence. Living in the mind of God. When I learned this practice of living in the mind of God, my world changed. I realized the world had put so much carnality perception on my life, and it changed my world. After we have the message, we're going to do Q&A. After Q&A, we're going to have healing rooms, okay? And let me explain to you what the healing rooms are. Um, after, you know, we've taken offering and everything, and if you're, you're well to leave if you'd like. But we have healing rooms because we love to walk people through unforgiveness, abandonment, rejection, or perversion. Because those are the main demons that hold people back from getting delivered. You know, I tell them all the time, I said, deliverance is easy. It is easy. The only reason why it's not easy is if because you got all those legal rights in there. Things you have given the enemy legal right to your life. But it's okay. I'm still working a list of 44, so it's okay. You know, me and this fast is, is working through them, and we are. But every day the Lord would minister to me and give me another. He said, remember this open door. Oh, remember that wound. Oh, remember you didn't forgive this? Oh, I thought I did, Lord. Remember this? Yeah, remember you came in agreement here? So this week I've been going after agreements, my unknown agreements. And I've been seeing breakthrough because the more agreements that you tear down, then God is able to flood deliverance. And you will know when deliverance is happening. Your mind gets to be free. You're not cloudy. You're not all indecisive. You don't know if you want blue or purple. You can't. You're just indecisive. Can't get your mind settled or your spirit. And then you're hearing all kind of voices because you're hearing the voice of an injustice. And the spirit of injustice come, it just brings a lot of voices with it. So in the healing rooms, they'll be in four corners. 
And also there'll be a, a corner where there's a healing room if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit and you would like to be. Or maybe you're filled and you haven't seen the flow of your prayer language. Or maybe you found yourself shipwrecked in some kind of depression and the enemy is trying to take your prayer language from you. So then we'll make sure we have that as well. So I'm just excited about what God is going to do. Why don't you just to give Jesus a hand? Oh, come on, come on, come on. Let's give Jesus a hand. Woo! My, 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 my. He's king in here. Lord, I'm about, see, he's not king and Lord everywhere. Oh, but he's Lord here. Nothing else rules here other than the Spirit of God. Let's get ready for the Word of God today. Mm, prepare your hearts to receive. Now, this is a prophetic word, so you do want to take notes. Let me tell you how you take notes in a prophetic service. Some words are going to come like somebody stabbing you. That's the ones that are totally true that you almost want to run out of your skin. You don't want to hear it, right? But it's going to be good for your soul. It's going to bring you to some healing, right? That some of the words are going to come like a soothsaving to your heart. Those are the ones that God has given you confirmation, right? Then there's going to be some that's going to make you want to fight and reject big time. That's the area that the demonic forces are still housed inside of you. So go after it. Hear the word and receive it. Just combat it while you're when the prophetic service, the enemy doesn't like you to receive certain things because we are bondage breakers. And whenever you struggle like that, the enemy don't want you to receive. But it's okay because the struggle will end and victory will come forth. All right. All right. Now, before we go on, just remember this is that the Sears program, it, we are taking applications at this time. Um, those of you that feel called to mentorship, and you do need to be called <laughs> to mentorship. Nobody's called to somebody that's always in, you know, in your business all the time and asking you questions and did you do this and accountability. But I promise you mentorship is a great step to walk in the fullness of your giftings and the anointings. If you find any great man or woman of God and they're in a plothy place, ask them who did they serve and who was their mentor? Ask them. If they say they don't have one, I promise you there's some strange fire there. Because without mentorship, you go into error. You do. But if you're called to the Sears group and you feel like, you know, I would be your mentor and you think you could take the truth all the time. If you can, I understand another season. It's okay. I'm going to love you anyway. Just come to our services. We'll still be good friends. All right? God bless. God bless. Let's get ready for the word of God. Staff, did you all give everybody these, agree these legal agreement flyers or lists? Okay, great. Everybody has those. You want to work those. If not, you can always text the ministry phone. You can, she's probably giving some out, but you can always text them. As I'm ministering, I want you to have an ear if you have any open legal rights that the enemy has entered your life. Let me give you the quick update. If the enemy is ruling in the area of your life, meaning that there's an area you don't have victory, something you're struggling with, something you can't forgive, you can't let go, prophet has tried to forgive them and I can't, or maybe something in your past that you came in agreement with. Maybe you're new, born again, walking in power and fully delivered now. But in the past, you had some agreements. So financial agreements, let me just give an example. You co-signed for some people you shouldn't have. You shouldn't have been nowhere near those poverty people, but you were, and you came in agreement with them. You need to bring that to the altar of God and move that to move that legal right. That's probably why your money's still messed up, your credit jacked up, and things of that nature, because there's still an agreement. You might say, well, prophetess, I'm done with them, but that's okay. The agreement is there. You can have an agreement in your heart. You can have a written agreement. You can have an email agreement. Did you know that? Yeah, people email and say they agree. Oh, I agree to love you all my life. I'm like, oh my goodness, you just agreed to attach yourself to this person all your life. And you don't understand 
that they're not for you and they're not even saved. But it was an agreement. So that's why you can't get married. That's the reason why you a man, got a man-hating demon in you. Because you still got a legal right there. Move the legal rights. I believe whenever you write down things in black and white, so you can't blame me. You can't get mad at me <laughs> just because I'm the voice right now, but you wrote it on that paper. So that means you have to deal with yourself. I believe in charting so I can deal with stuff. It's okay. Somebody probably say, well, prophets, I probably need five of these sheets because I got a couple of X's. I got plenty of them. I need, well, it's okay, baby. Just go on the back of the page and write on the other page and just keep going. I told you I, over, over three days, we started to fast. Over the first three days, I had 44. And I'm like, Lord, what are we doing here? But I'm working it. Do you hear me? I'm working it. Oh, don't look at me like that. I want to be free. I don't care what you say. I'm going to be free. Just watch me walk in power. You will you be free. You're going to walk in power. Mm -hmm. no, all right. Then don't start me right here. All right. If anybody did not get it and you would like it, text. Those of you that are online, you can text the ministry's phone and they will text it to you just so you can have the same thing that we have and you'll know what they're writing on. And you can always pr print it out yourself as well. All right. Let's get ready for the word. Father, breathe and open their ears that they may hear in Jesus' name and so shall it be. I have one last word. See the lady with the band on her head? Yes. The Lord said he hasn't forgotten you. He said just to tell you that, that he's not forgotten you. You know, when, that, when the Lord told me that, it always just caused my heart to be so tender. Because sometimes people can forget. You know, they do your stuff and then they just move on and forget. But God doesn't. God does. A man does, but God doesn't. And that's the word of the Lord for you. Blessings. You're going to have a wonderful time today. I pray that you receive this word. Blessings unto you. All right. Can I just have a moment where we pray in the spirit? Everybody, let's just touch heaven. Did you know that praying in the spirit is, can cause you to touch and release an open portal to be able to touch the heavens? Those of you that are filled with the Holy Spirit, Pray in your prayer language. You can pray out loud. Let me hear the rain of God falling in this place. Come on, get your spirit set. This is how you elevate in the spirit realm. This is how you touch God. This is how you move those things out your mind so you can receive this word. This is how you tap in so prophetic downloads can birth in your belly. Yes, this is how you hear the word of God. This is how you sharpen your spirit. Yes, 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 yes. Tap in, tap in. This is how you, you power your faith when the enemy is trying to say things. You power your faith in the spirit realm. Come on, power in, power in. See, the Lord's touching some of you already. He's breaking those yokes. No rebel shake. Mahande the mashe. This is how you stir up power on the inside of you. This is how you get a new tongue, a new language. Yande da da bashe. Woo. Me da da basha. And Lord, we bless you today. For you are God. Lord, visit us. We are desperate for you. We're desperate for your power. We're desperate for your love, God. Father, we pursue you and no other God other than you. Now let's get ready to receive the word of God and get some prophetic insight on spiritual intelligence. Knowing the mind of God. Now you must understand that life is spiritual. See, one of the main problems with individuals why they don't tap into God and go into the deeper realms of God is because they look at church as spiritual and they look at life as natural. So they go into the natural and they pick a friend, pick a house, pick a car minute they just pick whatever they want because they're in the natural they think it's just natural and then there's the spirit realm they only do that when they go in church and they lift their hands and they worship and they become really spiritual 
But life is spiritual. Your decisions are spiritual, every one of them. Where you choose to go to college, where you choose to work, who you choose to partner with, what do you wear in the morning, where you're going today, what business opportunity, what, what office you step in, what house you buy. It's a spiritual thing. God uses that where you live. There's certain demographics of a place that if you carry a certain anointing, you need to be in a certain place. I was summoned to the North Carolinas. You have no control over your life if you're really walking with God. So today, change your perspective that I will walk with God. He will tell you what to do, when to go, who to go. It does not matter. You might say, oh, prophetess, but, you know, that's my family. And, you know, oh, my God, I got a responsibility. You have a responsibility to God first. Look at your neighbor and say, God first. God first. God first. God first gets the blessing. God first gets the anointing. God first causes doors to open. God first kills compromise. God first will put you in a place of power that God will be able to flow through you. You know, I was sitting over there and the first word that I sat down, the Lord told me, he says, I'm preparing generals in here. Now, you know, they tell me that tells me there's some spiritual generals that are here in the making. And I told the Lord, thank you for allowing me to impart in their spirit. There's going to be a day 10 years from now. They're going to say, you know, I went to a service with Prophetess Miranda and, you know, she had jeans and white tennis shoes on. <laughs> and you're going to say, you know what? Things change for me. You're going to remember the impartation. Do you know I have several of those? I remember going in the service with Morris Sorello, one of the national evangelists, and one of his words came so loud to me just two days ago in this fast. See, if it's a real rhema word, that word will drop and bring life. It will bring life. And that, that was so many years ago. I thought he was as flipped out as ever, didn't make any sense. Oh, but it makes sense now. Prophetic never makes sense at the time because you can't be natural. See, you're in the natural whenever you're pressured and things of that nature. So life is spiritual. Now, your service is, is spiritual to God. You have to understand that. You don't just pick up something and say, oh, I prophesied today. It's not your gift. It's God's gift. See, the worst thing you could do is think it's, you, it's got all, something to do with all about you, and it doesn't. You should walk in his mind with the higher intelligent. The mind of God is vast. You ever want to go and shake up a business meeting? Go in there with the mind of God. Go in there with prophetic skills to be able to know who you're sitting across the table from. Speak when God says speak. Watch certain papers when he says. Because the intelligence of God is so brilliant. Yeah, it could take somebody dumb and just don't know, don't know, diddly. And all of a sudden that anointing drop. If it's got the mind of God, those brilliance is going to come on the scene. God's mind is not like ours. That's the reason why you're making all these wrong decisions. See, because you have to understand, so often people tell me, but prophetess, I wasn't saved then. I didn't know any better. I didn't understand. But get the mind of God and allow your mind to be blown away. Oh, just let God take over. When you do your perception change, <laughs> you see people different. Oh, yeah. The windshield wiper get clearer and clearer. It does. Everything in your life is spiritual. You have to stop taking the flesh walks around the park. Every so often, well, prophet is God's just taking too long. I'm like, so you're going on your own little flesh walk? You're going to pay. How many of you know you pay for those kind of walks? Just go it on and throw in the towel and relax till that, until God is ready. You pay for those quick walks in the park. I'm tired. Prophetess, you know I've been waiting long enough. Oh, it's time to do something. You're going to pay the price. There is a price. Spiritual intelligence is how you think and living out of the mind of God. 
when God comes in and fills you with the power of the Holy Spirit, and he begins to do the renovation. In my book, I have eight foundational keys that help you to know how to get your spiritual walk in line. You really should go and look at that because sometimes individuals get so excited about the supernatural and the things of God that they literally start to jump steps and then they're missing certain pieces. They're missing, they're missing the deliverance. So they just, go, they just go straight on to the supernatural. What are you doing walking in the supernatural, igniting stuff, and you got stuff, demons on the inside of you? Like that's not going to work. You're going to pay a price. Now... Spiritual intelligence is speaking out of God's throne to your heart. So what is the prophetic? The prophetic is literally speaking out of the heavens into the earth. That is God's intelligence coming to the earth and blowing your mind. Some, some people say, all she talks about is the prophetic. It is my world because it saves my life. See, I used to move on emotions. I'm a very loving and giving person. But don't worry, because there's two other people you need to meet inside of me, which is the prophet and the mother of Zion. And both of them can be very, quite something to deal with. However, if you listen to them, they'll save you a lot of pain. A lot of pain. Now, but when spiritual intelligence comes in and God gives you download. You become a powerhouse. You don't be moved. I used to be moved by every bit of emotion. Oh, they've been so nice to me. Oh, you know, what am I going to, oh, you know, I owe them. And the Lord kept telling me, he said, you don't owe them anything. He said, bless them, love them, and go on. He said, but I created their heart to do that for you. Do you understand that you're in a path of God? I, whenever God has endorsed you money got to come because you got the backing oh yes you say God told you to do something wherever there is vision there better be provision oh yeah line upon line Line up online. So prophet is, well, what do you mean? God told me to, God told me to create this nonprofit and I don't understand because the money's not coming. I had to shut down. I don't understand. You're out of season, sweetie. It's a good thing. I believe your word of the Lord. Yes, but you're out of season. You're out of season or you are not in a place where you're spiritually ready to be trusted with what God's going to give you to deal with that. Maybe you trying to step in power before power is ready to be endowed in you. Oh my God. Moko ora. That does delay mean denied? No, it does not. It just means you not done in the oven. That's all. You just still a little gooey. Anybody break bread? Anybody bake bread in here? Okay, so you know you be gooey. You know, you know. You ever seen a bread that looks so beautiful and brown? Well, when you put butter on, the, on it, right? All these fasting people are probably going, no, she's not talking about bread. <laughs> you know, it looks so pretty and wonderful. And then you cut it and it's all gooey and you're like, mm, not done in the oven. It does not mean that. But spiritual intelligence causes wisdom, prophetic word of knowledge, the five-fold ministry to come in action and activate it. And you won't miss what you mean, prophet, is you won't ever be wrong? Not if you're led by God and walk in spiritual intelligence. Because spiritual intelligence causes you to be leaned in to the ear of God. Mm -hmm. Okay? You must position your heart towards God at all times. Now, this is one of my personal keys. Nobody taught this to me. The Lord did. And this is how I hear him, and this is how I can walk just as regular and walk with him every day my heart is always been towards him if something goes wrong somebody get a phone call they tell me this my heart immediately goes straight to him okay daddy what is this immediately I put my discerner on what is this is this a call from the heaven or is this a call from the demon busters which one I need to know which 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 world is this coming from because see that's going to tell me how to act if it's, from, if it's from the wrong side, see, I know to draw a sword. But if it's from the heavens, I just rest. Yeah. 
and go, okay, I don't understand why this is happening, but I'm going to rest. When your heart is bent towards God, you command your spirit to rest. All of this frustration, anxiety, making all these wrong decisions because of one little flipped out night. You flipped out, so you just decide to go date Bobo. And then that one little flipped out night got you 10 years of hell. That's all right. If it's not in the house, it's online. I know I'm on target. Got it? But it's okay. Because today I decree supernatural intelligence falls in this room today. Supernatural wisdom, fivefold ministry, insight, clarity in the name of Jesus. So where is your heart? Before I can teach you how to have your heart bent, who has your heart? Fred? Julianne? Who's got your heart? Does God have it? Look, let me say this now. You, you got you to gotta move those legal rights. Um, are you all writing? Y'all should be writing. Y'all getting them legal rights? Okay, just, just let them go ahead on and roll. You don't, I don't have to see your paper, so it's okay. But you need to write it out because writing it out make you deal with it. Now, so who has your heart? To have your heart bent to God, you will always know his will. And you will get the perfect will of God. I would not want to be anywhere but right where I am today because I know it is the perfect will of God for my life. I'm not a Johnny come late. I didn't just happen to slide in here. I didn't just no perfect will. And you know what? I'm not going to leave Charlotte until I know the perfect will is over because I want the will of God. I want to be where I'm supposed to be. Prophet is, but what about the Lord say he would give you desires of your heart? But see, I'm so yielded that my desire is his. So let's roll, Jesus, wherever you want. You send me, I'll go left. Okay, right. Let's roll wherever you say. Let's roll. Let's roll. Louisiana, got it. On my way. Texas, on my way. It's okay. Atlanta, on my way. Until he says stop. But see, some of you all... You got an idol in there and your heart is bent towards something else. So you are actually fighting with the almighty God and your little bitty God is trying to box with our big God that's trying to get you to a place. Okay, so you all are also in Nobby Healing Center. And Nobby Healing Center, we have imaginary buckets. And so whenever I say something that attests to you, you can paste a smile on your face and just do this and nobody will ever know. In the spirit realm, go ahead on and dish it out and say, yes, Lord, I got it. I got it, Lord. That's me. Uh huh. See, prideful people will not grab our, our imaginary buckets because they want you to believe that they're okay. But remember what I told you, nothing but Jesus reigns in here. <laughs> that includes Leviathan is not ruling in here. No, because deliverance getting ready to be loosed. Position your heart to take discipline and manage your emotions. That is a power thing. Power. I know some of you all say, Prophet, no, I'm going to go on a 40 day fast with just water. Just make sure Jesus is telling you that. Just be endorsed. But you don't understand. Sometimes you need to discipline some of the minor areas in the side of you. Maybe you need to dig down to the core and find out why you're so emotional. Is it a mother thing? Is it a daddy thing? What started the roller coaster moving? Now, in positioning your heart, if your heart is bent towards God, you will eventually enter the secret place. And you will know how to easily just go in there. See, in preparing your heart to go in the secret place, you don't go in there trying to ball stuff. You, don't, you know, you're so broken before God. You're just whatever, Lord. And before you know it, you slip in that place. And you're in this atmosphere you, where you feel lost and loved. but the enemy can't find you in there yeah he can't smell you he can't even find your trace or your scent because you're protected Whoop. you are protected 
who come on my secret place people know what I'm talking about if you visit there before you know what I'm talking about you've ever been in a place where you actually in the lap of God and you feel so whole you don't know what's going on uh, banks still overdrawn kids still flipping out it's still raining outside but you in a safe place and the secret place knows you it's almost like as if and this is one of the most natural things I can tell you you ever have stuff raging up in your life it looks like when you go in the secret place somebody press a button and say pause and you go in this room and you get drunk, you get drunk in God. Do you know what it is to be drunk in God? See, some of you all are so busy trying to fill this flesh. But God is trying to say, let me give you a drink. If you let me give you a drink, if I give you a drink, I promise you'll be able to let go. You'll be able to forgive. You'll forgive all those things in your head. You'll be able to forgive those people. You'll stop looking negative. You'll stop speaking negative if you just let me give you a drink. The secret place has an atmosphere that is there. And that atmosphere absorbs you. And while you're in there, he stops time for you. Oh, my God. Hardened it at a shame. So as you, if you position your heart to be bent towards God and you're able to visit this atmosphere that just fixes you and God is on the throne of your heart and there's an amazing victory that just happened. Some things only God can fix. Some of y'all just going to back up. You know, sometimes I fight from the floor. Just lay right on that floor and just say, here am I. What they say, well, what you going to do? So I ain't doing nothing. I'm laying on the floor. Face to the floor. I just got to cry. Let me sob it a little bit. That's where I fight from. You fight from the floor, prostrated before God. Do you know when you prostrate on that floor, you've, you've put all of you down on that floor. See, some of y'all need a good blood bath. Y'all know that? Y'all need a washing. See now, when this amazing atmosphere consumes you, you get this power in this fight to be able to subdue demon spirits. You know, you will know the difference whenever you start to lose your passion. Now let me, let me, this word is for whoever is in this room for sure. Don't lose your passions for God. Do, see, it's time to strip these idols. Today we get ready to strip idols. Did y'all know that? Oh, I forgot to tell you that part. <laughs> ah, I left that part out of the agenda. We gonna strip it. We gonna strip it. We gonna strip it. Glenda, I see a pen in your hand. And God has given you stuff, and you're just writing. I need you to write anything come to your head. Put a date to it. Everything, just, just know it's got meaning to it. It's got meaning to it. Now, when you start losing your passion, there's things that happen. An idol shows up. Yeah. You know, idols usually come and tempt you with what you like. You know the house you've always wanted. You know the wife you you know the trophy wife you've always wanted her. Oh my God, God has brought the wife. And then she becomes an idol. The mind and the thoughts will begin to and be invaded with lust when you start to lose your passion. Typically, whatever you were bound with before you were saved or in your early years. Whenever you start losing your passion, it starts to be ignited again. So you got to go after that, right? When you open up a door to the sifting of the enemy, it's, it slowly happens. You still think you're on fire, but you to let your idol uproot you from your place. So we're going to talk about what, what idols could be. Now, there is a force in the unseen world that makes you battle in the mind. 
And I call it the battle of the gods. Sometimes I can see people and they, they look like they got two heads. The enemy is telling them God's not going to be here. They've had all these miracles. God's not going to come. You're going to be put out. You're not going to have this. And their mind is just wavering like this. Now, that is where the battleground is. See, that's when you're losing your passion. See, otherwise, you got to stay strapped up. So let me say this to you all. Those of you that are warriors, that are intercessors, called to the ministry in any capacity, I need you to understand that there is no rest. There's spiritual rest in God. There is. In God, you will rest. But on the battlefield, you always got to be drawing a sword. You know, in the Bible, they slept with their swords. Did you know that? They slept with it. Yeah, they didn't go too far from their swords. They stayed with them no matter wherever they go. You know, the sword for us is the word. Yes. Some of you all can't back away from your word and think you're not going to go on a battle. Do you know one or two days of not reading the word? Do you know lust will invade you? Whatever your Egypt was or your lesion is going to come back. Because it's already trying to creep and come back. You do know that, right? Okay. Spiritual intelligence is birthed out of the knowledge of God and your passion to know him. You want spiritual intelligence and you want God to impart wisdom that can, oh my God, can rank up with Solomon? Oh my goodness. Spiritual intelligence is birthed out of the knowledge of God and how much you know him. My greatest thirst is always, Lord, I want to know you. I want to know you deeper, Lord. Some of y'all think, oh, prophet, is how do you pray? Like, what do you say? And they looking for this big, long, I said, I want to know you. My soul thirsts for you, God. Keep me, God. Put your hands around me and keep me in this world today. That's it. Do you know the Lord just loves when you're broken before God? You know, there are words that you can say to ignite the hand of God. Did you know that? Oh, y'all need to go to those love words in my book. Say those words to the Lord. Talk to him with them. I'm telling you, they work. Knowing God is to thirst for him. It's to thirst. The Lord loves when you pursue him and you thirst after him. See if you keep thirsting after him. All he wants. See, some of y'all get so jealous of people's spiritual gifts. He just says, thirst for me, baby. Just thirst for me. Just lay in the bed and say, God, I want more of you. My soul yearns for you, God. Do you understand? And he says, hold up. Drink, 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 drink. And that's the day you got that new revelation. That's the day you dropped one of them demons and it didn't torment you anymore. Now you don't need to be scared. You don't need to be fearful because now power has reigned. When you find yourself in this place that you've lost your passion or it's sifting, you must begin to dig deep. See, now, I have mentors. I've had several of them. Several. Several. I was a lot. <laughs> Needed plenty to keep me together. That was a lot, yeah. I had to dig deep. But they taught me how to dig deep. And you know what one of them told me? <laughs> she said, I'm not going to be modern than you. I, got, I, don't, I don't have time to be modern than you. I said, oh, <laughs> okay. I said, well, give me the tools then. <laughs> like, okay, since so you just said this. And she was, she was serious. She was not kidding. So I don't have time for this. She said, you want the tools? She said, be around me. Sit at my feet. Drink from the word. Watch what I do. Ask the Lord. Keep a right heart towards me. Don't get jealous of me. He said, and just yield. You know, Elijah and Elisha, if you watch that relationship, there's so much revelation in that. 
How many of you all would have stayed six, seven years talking about Pastor Seiko go ahead on and do that and just going to believe that that's going to happen, right? Mm-hmm. See, but Elijah actually had some prophetic on him even while he was serving. You know, prophetic is powerful to a servant. They're not ignited yet, but it's there. You know why? Because wherever you serve, you have to touch the things of the prophet. And you drink from the same well. It just has a certain time that it shows up. It doesn't show up immediately like you think. And see, sometimes God knows we got some little leviathans in us. Some of the little, little roots in there. So he don't show you what you're walking in. <laughs> Maybe I'm talking about myself because that's what he did to me. He didn't tell me. I was doing media. I couldn't spell nothing but media. Do you understand? But the entire time I was doing media, he was depositing. And when I woke up one day, there was so much word in me. I started speaking to the tape recorder and making CDs at home talking to nobody. <laughs> I just had to get it out of me and I tried to give it to somebody and I kept saying what is all of this I didn't even I didn't know how I knew the stuff I knew I didn't even know what I knew and I was like where is it's like somebody would stick a a faucet and stuff would just pour out and pour out and pour out do you know that pouring has never stopped oh my god spiritual intelligence is amazing See the lady in the back with the gold earrings? Lift your hands. You have a big angel giving downloads to you right now. The Lord said that thing going to be fixed when you get home. He said you're going to have a wisdom before you leave here of what to do about it. He said rest because there is a download coming to you. Man of God, there's a power deposit being deposited in you right now. Woman of God, touch him and tell him that, yes, there is a power of dynamite just exploding in him. Why? Who the Lord is taking out those things in that mind? what God has anointed I dare them touch God's anointed see y'all made me act a mess now I'm trying to act cute today who can touch what God has anointed let them shut one door, another one go open, and another one, and another one. That's no peons of money which you need. That ain't nothing. God could wink and cause that to be so. None did it, she. And Lord, I send Holy Ghost backing to him in the name of Jesus. Let them fight that. When you got Holy Ghost backing, you are untouchable. Just keep your heart bent towards God. Let me have everybody say, Lord, keep my heart bent towards you. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Oh, let's give God some glory in here. Oh, my God. Woo. How you perceive life is from the knowledge that has been placed in you. So some of you all are spiritually still in kindergarten because of the people that's put the knowledge in you, that put the ranks on you. They won't let you go. So they won't let you grow because you'll grow greater than them. So how you perceive life is because of what's been placed on you. Demonstration. If you tell me, think out this little box, I, I can only go here. But the true and living God is so vast, 
and you have such destiny on your life, the box busts open. And now you got open heaven of revelation, understanding. Now you open for deliverance. Now God's getting ready to explode that word on the inside of you. And true anointings is getting ready to be birthed. Wait a minute. So you mean prophet is, you, you, you mean I'm in this poverty state because I was under poverty? Yes. Wait, wait, wait. Prophet is, you mean I only know portion of the Bible because that's all they taught me? Yes. Wait, prophet is, you mean I could get just financial miracles but not really supernatural miracles because that's all they taught me, right? Yes. I'm the judge that's saying yes today. Everything is yes. I say unto you, grow, expand, bust loose. Do you hear me in the spirit realm? Expand. Go to the next place in God. God is open for you. Go to the next place. You got visions. You got things to birth in you. Birth, baby, birth. Some of you are so worried about people, you know, and they're going to take this. And girl, the more they took, the double more, the next morning, double, 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 triple. Yeah. <laughs> I would just be like, wait, God, we're not feeling it. He said, they, it ain't going to work in their hands anyway. Okay, I'm on to the new. Hey. I'd wake up the next morning, triple, 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 triple. I was like, oh, my God. Don't worry about the naysayers. That's small stuff. Go into the secret place. Get in that glory realm. Do you understand? Why are you in this flesh thing down here? Go to the next place. What did Marcerella tell me? Some Miranda, if they fight you on the national, on the local, just go to the national. They fight you there, go to the international. Keep moving. Ah, that I shame. So the greatest thing that I learned to do I don't know where I got this from either. It's one day I just had this chair. And when I sat in this chair, I felt, I don't know, I felt like I was on God's lap. And it was interesting because every time I would feel broken or beaten up by the enemy or they shouldn't have did this and they blamed this and they hid this and they hurt me here, I would find myself in this chair. So I started naming it my God chair. And I would run there. And I would feel like as if I'm sitting in his lap. I need you to live in his lap and absorb the atmosphere. How do you perceive life is the knowledge in which has been placed in you. So today we change our perception. Yeah. The mere fact that you're here today, you're changing your perspective. Sure you are. You are. If you're traditional, they say stay in this box and you better not get out this box. And you better not do anything different. But you got to step out the box to get the fullness of God. Do you know that there are people that are waiting on you all? So if you don't get out that box, you will never fulfill the glory that's on your life. Oh, my God. Let me say this. See, whenever the Lord's giving you downloads and you're getting healing in a deliverance service, sometimes you feel like you got a headache. It feel like, like you feel like your mind is, is expanded. That's because truth is coming and healing is coming. Just pray within your spirit, man, because the Lord is downloading something and you're going to go back with something. Now, are you spiritually minded? How will you get spiritual intelligence if you're not spiritually minded? You, when you're spiritually minded, you will hear spiritual things. See, when I look at her or I would look at him, I see a spiritual thing. Because my mind is spiritually minded. It's great he's got a Fasashi suit on and he's got this. But my spiritual mind say what's in him? And what's on him? And what is he carrying? There will be daily warfare. You must understand that if you're a leader, a warrior, or anointed vessel of any kind, there will be daily war. But your tools will be so powerful, it won't even feel like war. It'll feel like your norm. That's why when new people get in, they'll be like, I'm battling so much, and they'll be just like falling apart. And I'm, and I'm like, wait, hold up. What army did you sign up for? Wait, the one I did? I'm like, because I, I was told this was daily. 
I said, oh, that's just lunch. It's okay. <laughs> like, what? I'm like, oh, that's just lunch. Dinner's coming too. <laughs> but your tools get bigger. Your weapons get bigger. Let's go through some quick history just for a moment. Let me know my time. Let's look at some biblical history and some facts. Now, are you walking in spiritual intelligence? Allow your mind to birth. Those of you that get up in the morning, you get downloads from God. You write journals in God. And go ahead on and listen to what he says because there's going to be a day that stuff's going to be birthed. Do you know the more you do that, the more keener you will get in the spirit to know when God is going to birth something? Do you know he'll start telling you words? Then it'll start with sentences. Then it'll be paragraphs. Then it'll be like full dotted line stuff, right? Then he start giving you dates and numbers. Did y'all know God was a numbers man? Uh, you upside down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let me ask you this. We're getting ready to deal with idols. So let me ask you this. Are you in your Egypt? Are you in your wilderness? Are you in your promised land? Which one? Come on, which, which, every, everybody got to figure it out. <laughs> you got to figure out where you are. Okay, well, let's walk. You got to figure out which one you, are you in your Egypt? Are you in your wilderness? Are you in the promised land? If you're in Egypt, how did you get there? Okay, let me, let, let me just say this. Somebody's saying. Prophetess, I'm so sick of this Egypt. I want to get out this Egypt. Look, I'm not trying to throw this Egypt in your face. I'm really not trying to do that. But if you don't figure out how you got to Egypt, you'll be on the way back there and don't know it. Because, you know, when you're going up to Egypt and you've lost your passion, you don't even know that you're on that road because you become spiritually blind. Let me give you an example. Have you ever, ever had a little... 16 or 18 year old that just think they're ready to get married they just think bubby is going to be the love of their life forever right and no matter what you tell her nope because i don't care what you say right see she on her way down to egypt but she don't know it because she's spiritually blind she's actually on the road with all the big highways that's even got all the billboards say egypt that way she don't see it. She reads it backwards. So she don't know what the word means. So she's trying to figure out, well, what does that mean? She has no clue, so she ignores it. So where, where are you? Prophetically, you must assess yourself all the time. Nobody should assess you. I tell my mentees all the time, look, I'm not your dollar prophet. Don't, no, don't, no. I said, what the last thing God said to you? Tell me that. Tell me what God has warned you and tell me your last big boo-boo. Then I'm going to tell you what the Lord's got to say. I say, you hear God just like I do. I don't have God in a box all by myself. Especially if you've been walking with me and walking, been sitting under me. Oh, you got a box to hear from God. Right? Praise the Lord. <laughs> so you must know how you got to Egypt. Somebody's saying, but prophet is, I don't even want to think about this. It's making me sad. That's good. That means we're getting, we getting ready to call that demon up and out. And he know his time is coming short. Yes, that's what that means. But it's okay. It's okay. It's good. Because we can ready to churn it up. We're going to make you go back in those paths and look at that stuff and then be ready to draw a sword. Now, you need spiritual intelligence to conquer. Remember, life is spiritual, and you have to spiritually discern. Oh, that's a word. Thank you, Lord. Life must be spiritually discerned in every area. Every area, no matter what. If you got to tie, put one of those little bands on your hand to make you remember, don't forget to discern. Don't forget to discern. If you got to put it on your phone, make it come up all the time. You go ahead on and start in the natural, it's going it's to ease on in the spirit. 
If you can't spiritually discern, you will have no success. Oh, you don't understand. You're not going to have no success. Not if you don't spiritually discern. You must spiritually discern. Now, Israel is God's people whom he bought up out of Egypt with miraculous miracles. You can go to Jeremiah 32 and 21. That's going to be our founder in scripture, which will be a blessing to you. So I want to implore you today that God will bring you out. Why don't you look at your neighbor and say, God will bring you out. So you're forgiven and God's going to bring you out. By the way, you're almost out. You're at the door. Oh my God. You're at the door. Ooh. I feel like I want to run around this room. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like I want to run. You know, y'all can run in here. You know that, right? Ooh, because I feel breakthrough. The chain breaker is in the room. He's 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 visiting us. He's in the room. Woo, my, 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 my. He's in the room. Oh, you're not my shay. Fresh wind in the name of Jesus. Fresh wind. Yeah. <laughs> they were bought out of Egypt. <laughs> then they went into a wilderness. Then into the land called Canaan. It was the promised land. You know, this was actually the land that was promised to Abram. So you got to understand this. Let's just pull the wisdom out of that. God has given you promises. Some of y'all saying, but prophet is. He gave me that when my child was two. The child 22 now. It doesn't matter. It ain't 400 years. And I, I look at it this way. If you live past 400, that's a miracle in itself, right? <laughs> Like, praise the Lord. <laughs> That's a miracle. But you have to understand there's three states, and you must understand these states today. You got to know the feel of Egypt. See, when that Egypt getting ready to pull you back, you know them lust thoughts. What's in Egypt? We're going to talk about that. Now, Abram was prophesied about the promised land. God actually told him that. You know, God does not send you into the famine nor the wilderness without telling you. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on. Do you know the Lord warned you about Egypt? Yes. Come on. Yes. Everybody. Yes. He didn't warn you. Yes. You didn't get no scripture. Yes. You know, Aunt Betty didn't drop by with a word of the Lord and you wanted to put her out your house. That was the word of the Lord. The man of God, your pastor, your shepherd spoke a word, preached a Sunday service, and you're like, oh, my God, this is me. God will always tell you, even if you don't want to hear. But let's go to Genesis. Genesis 15, verses 13 through 16. Now, let me say this to you. Let's walk that word for a little bit. Oh, Rabashi. Let's try... English Standard Version. How about that? So you have to understand that in this, the children of Israel were not faithful to their covenant. And that's what their first problem was. That's their first problem. So you get all these miracles. Come on, use your personal life. Come on, you got the miracle and what happened? Come on, you got lax. Yes, I got it now. The chains is in the bank. I got it now. And then you relax. And then you start finding yourself slipping back to Egypt. You don't even know how you got on that road. Was it one wrong word? 
prophetess, I thought I heard God. It looked like God. It felt like God. It felt like the season of it. I thought I was there. But then one day I look up and there was a big sign say, Egypt, you are here. Egypt. And I don't know how I got there. But then after 400 years of crying and laboring, the Lord sends a deliverer. And then I go into a wilderness. And it looks like God's not talking to me. My deliverer go up to talk to the Lord, don't come back. So I just pull out my Egypt stuff. I just do what I was taught for 400 years. What were you taught in your Egypt? You're in your wilderness now, but what were you taught? What did they teach you? Did they teach you to be traditional? What did they teach you? They teach you was God was only a little bitty God. He was only answer certain people. You had to be, you had to be a pastor or a prophet in order for God to speak to you. So you got all this religious stuff on you. So now you can't hear God. Why? So now while the man of God is up talking to the Lord, my deliverer, who literally brought me through and split the, split the seas. I mean, I had a tangible miracle. How many miracles you've had? Come on. How many calls God done saved from you? How many houses? How many times God has been merciful to you and gave you such mercy, things you know you deserve that you didn't get it? He protected and covered you. But in this, in Genesis 15, verses 13 through 16, you know, God shows Am Abram that Israel was going to be enslaved. Do you know that's not many times that anytime time I go into a season of war, I always know. It's never a surprise. I always know when it's coming, what it looked like, and then eventually he shows me who it's going to move through. See, this is the reason why prophetic eyes is so important. Some of you all that pause your, your prophetic gifts... And take that walk in the flesh. The Lord taking too long. The Lord know I have needs. Okay. Go right on ahead. Take the walk in the park, baby. Dial my number. I'm going to come get you out there. Because you're going down to Egypt. Uh-huh. Yes. But you see, I know that God would bring me out. See, because Exodus 6 and 7 told me that. And it reads, and I will take you. To me for my people. Oh my God. See this was the promise. And I will be to you as a God. And ye shall know that I am your Lord. Your God. Which bringeth you out. From under burdens. And from the Egyptians. He's going to bring you out. I don't care what the struggle is. He's going to bring you out. He will bring you out. Do you hear Maybe it don't happen the way you think, but he going to bring you out. But prophetess, I didn't really mean this. I got tricked in this. Prophet, I got seduced. You don't understand that wasn't my heart. My heart was to do right. Get them legal rights out of there. And then you'll be able to see that thing. You can't get tricked unless it got a legal right that's blinding you. Somebody need. Does anybody hear me today? If you got tricked, it's because there was a legal right where the enemy could come in and subdue you. So the legal right meant you had something in agreement already. So it put its slick hook and it says, oh, I see that lying spirit in her. That works. I can connect to that. Mm. Oh, her daddy was an um, a alcoholic. Take one drink. I dare you take one drink. So one day she just decided that she's going to be normal and take a flesh, flesh walk. And all of a sudden, she's going to go have a little highball. And that one highball, that demon takes, that dad's generational. See, sometimes demons don't deal within your life. They goes back into what your family generation. That's why you think you're fighting something. Well, I remember one lady told me, she said, I feel like I'm fighting for my life. She said, I don't feel like this is the regular battle. I said, it's not, baby. You fighting warlocks and witches from your grandmother. But see, some of y'all can just throw those words around it, but you better go after those legal rights and remove them. Remove the attachments. 
Do you know when you talk to people, if you're not prayed up and you got that emotional bond, do you know what's in them come back in you? Keep talking to all these people that's got all that lust and all the men and women in their life and think you could hang on the phone for two and three hours and think you're not going to receive something. Go ahead on powerhouse. Powerhouse going to be going straight to the pit. Why you think you're so strong? Tell me. I, d I discover you got a lust thing going on. Get out my face. I love you. I'm going to pray for you. But you back off. Because what's in you, not coming in here. No, you ain't coming in here. No, I have had my days battling that demon, and that day is over. But see, some of you all that's so traditional and super spiritual. Oh, but that's my friend, and that's my cousin. You getting cousin's demons. That's why you got night demons visiting you at night, and you said something's on top of you, and it's holding you down. It ain't your stuff you dealing with. It's your friends. Because you were so super spiritual. While you was talking that two hours, it was going transfer. Transfer. Okay. I tried. Let me move on. Next. Although they was in the promised land, there was giants in the land, and they had to conquer them. Some of you all, the Lord's going to bring you to that great special place. He's going to open up those businesses and give you a niche that's, that's going to make multi-million dollars. Because I believe that the Lord is literally taking it from the heathen and bringing it down to the God's house. I believe that. And he's going to do it through witty ideas and clean hands. Do you understand? That's how he's going to do it. However, you need to understand that even while that transfer is happening, oh, there's going to be some giants. That's going to say, well, 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 why he think he could do that? Or there's going to be some deceivers who said that they were Christ-like and then they can't spell Christ. Okay. So how did the children of, Egypt, of Israel get in Egypt? Since you all won't figure that out, I'm going to help you all figure out for them. But you need to know how you got to Egypt so you can know who to stay away from and you can know what that thing is you're weak to. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all weak to McDonald's? Stay off the street that McDonald's is on. <laughs> Don't go on the street. Don't, no, no. Mm -mm. Nope. Don't, don't go on the street. No. In the book of Genesis, the Israelites had to come to live in Egypt in the land of Goshen. Now it's interesting because they thought they were coming to a wonderful thing. But you know there ain't nothing good in Egypt, right? It looks plenty. It looks like it is. You know, it, Egypt, literally, Agosha, literally means draw near and the land of plenty. And they had plenty there. Till Pharaoh decided that he was going to put them in bondage because they were going to outnumber him. And during the famine, due to the fact that the Israelites, you know, here comes Joseph, right? Now, he's a, um, going to be a key character for us. Who are the key characters that bought you in Egypt? Who's the key character that bought you out of Egypt? Who was your deliverer? You need to remember those three people. See that one that seduced you and got you in Egypt? You better not ever forget their face. You know they smell. You know they look. And the minute anybody starts farming like them, run, forest, run. Go the other direction. I'm just, I'm, I'm strapping you up today. I know some of y'all like, this woman is not saying this. I am saying this. It's not a mistake. I am saying this. You need to know those people. You need to know who was your deliverer. Now, Joseph was the one that actually got them there and saved their lives. And it was a good thing. But you know, sometimes you can stay in Egypt too long and pick up their stuff. See, when, some, when the Lord tells some of y'all get out of Egypt, you better get out of there. Oh, but prophetess, I think I'm going to stay a little bit. Okay. When God say move, you move. Yes. And do you know the Lord loves us so much that he won't talk to us in Japanese if we don't speak Japanese. He will not. He's going to put it in the language you understand. Do you know God will make people at Walmart, somebody at the grocery store, somebody here, and somebody say the same thing. But you do know when you got that flesh, you don't want to hear that, right? Okay. All right. But they thought they were going to the land of plenty. 
and they ended up in bondage. That's a scenario there. Did you hear the scenario? Yes. Who in here getting ready to make decisions? You're in the midst of like major life decisions. This message is for you. You need spiritual intelligence to make that decision. Don't deal with your flesh. Don't deal with your emotions. God has already gave you the answer. You've gotten download. Now you just need strategy to know how to do it. But you follow exactly what he says. You don't move till he says move. You move exactly how he says it. But prophet is, what if it hurts? What if this? I said you wait till he says it. Because every part of it, you have to know that he's got you. So you got to release that now faith in you. Lord, let the now faith come alive in them. Hmm. So Joseph was the chosen one that actually got them there and saved their lives because God put him in position. Sometimes God can use position to be a blessing to you. Sometimes he used you in a position to be a blessing to others, but still don't stay too long. When he said leave, you leave, but it's okay because he used him in that position mightily. Now, in it is in this place where they actually was taken into slavery. See, that's where the bondage came. See, when you stay too long, you be enslaved. And then you're stuck. And then you got to wait till God gets you out. Because if you try to get yourself out, you might lose your life. You might get hit by a car. You might all kind of crazy stuff happen. You'd be like, what happened? And then when you've gotten yourself into Egypt, Egypt is danger. It's full of worldliness, carnality. It has things to, it's coming after you. So now you, you know, you out of that grace. You just walked in another side. Oh, do y'all understand when you've walked outside of the grace of God? You know, you done did your stuff. You understand. All right, look, y- y- am I the only one ever did that? I, uh, uh, uh-huh. I did, I did, I did, I did. But it's okay, because I believe that the Lord pulled me out and saved me so that I could be a voice. So I could pull some preachers out. See, I can pull some people out. See, I can tell somebody, baby, I want you to know you can walk in power. And you don't need anybody. All you need is the backing of God and the anointing of God flowing out of your mouth. And that's all that you need. Okay, I got to go fast because they tell me that I'm, I'm, I've got little time. Egypt represents sin, bondage, worldliness, carnality, and idols. That's what it represents. That leads people away from the true God, Jehovah. You know, in Egypt is where they were introduced to so much stuff. And so you would think that they were God's people there. But they had to be merging into something because guess what? When they got in the wilderness and the man that God went to talk to the Lord, all the Egypt started coming out. They were building a calf. They were just doing, they were doing what they knew. So tell me what has been deposited in you in Egypt that's struggling in your promised land right now. Why is it in there? You got to get the Egypt out of you. Come on now, that's just called deliverance. It's okay. I'm a deliverer. I'm a deliverer. I'm anointed for the deliverance. I'm going to help you come out. But you can't lie to yourself and tell you that it's not there. When they went in that wilderness after all those miracles, they still remember that Egypt. They knew how to make the calf. They were doing their own thing. And the Lord didn't like it. Sometimes that Egypt gets deep down inside of us. We merge with people and they stuff get in us. So we got to get the stuff out of us so we can go on to the promised land. Don't you think it's amazing that all those people went with the promised land, but that wasn't an amount that went out? Don't you think that's phenomenal? What does that say? Everybody is not going to make it to the promised land. But are you called? Are you the world shaker? I don't know. The Lord told me I was talking to generals today. That the general rise up. Who's the general in here? You got that word hidden in your belly? You just ain't pulled the sword out yet, but you a general? Yeah, you got a medal. It's just in hiding right now. 
see the weapons <laughs> and the, the medals that they have? That's the pain. <laughs> okay. I'm going to talk to man to God by myself. I ain't talking to nobody else. I'm just going to talk to him. That's it. I'm just going to talk to him. That's the medals. Why can I be a deliverer? Because I needed a lot of deliverance. Duh. That's why I can feel when they're getting weak. That's why I know when that demon getting ready to rise and take them over. Because I know what it's like to be tricked. But there's a God, do you want to hear me? That hears the cries of his people. Come out of bondage today. Today is your day of freedom. Come out of bondage. Oh, Rabasha. Come out of bondage today. Today the Lord God set you free today. Yeah, la la ba sha. They not going to stop you. Who's going to stop you? Come out of them grave clothes. Loose them today. Mando da da she. The problem is that Israel was not faithful to their covenant. And they began to serve other gods. Then they wandered into that wilderness for 40 years. Come on. On the way to the promised land for 40 years. Some of y'all wouldn't be able to believe for four days. Prophetess. The Lord didn't show up. The prophecy not true. Man, I just put Morrisarella and all the rest of them people's prophecy on the shelf. I couldn't figure it out. I'm like, well, none of this. I don't look like what they're saying. So something wrong. I got to grow or something. But one day, the stuff off the shelf starts showing up. One by one. And then the puzzle start getting clear. I'm trying to give you hope today. I want to give you hope today. It's not over. God hasn't forgotten you. You're just going through a season. And he's trying to make you a general. He's giving you some, some medals. And some of the medals is pain and abandonment and rejection. But know this, whatever you go through, you'll be anointed to cast out. Mando da da shit. 40 years, then they start going with these idols. Like, come on. How many times some of y'all got, got mad with God? God wasn't taking long enough, so you went to the, to the witchcraft worker. Oh, prophet, she, she not, oh no, she's not a witch prophet. She just, she just do crystals. That's it. <laughs> oh, prophet, no, 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 no. She just see things. No, she, no, 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 no. She don't have no altars or none of that. She just see stuff. What eyes she looking out of? <laughs> And who is our God? You know, I tell people all the time, you know, my mentees, you want to date my mentees? Who is your God? Do, you, do I know your God? Who you, wait, wait, you trying to date her? You trying to date her? Wait, uh, well, who your God, lady? I know you look cute and churchy, but who's your God? Y'all better find out whose God they are. They'll have a Molech or somewhere believing your, you know, Solomon married all them strange different people with all those child sacrifices. And you want to know then why she flipping out. You didn't find out who her God was. And this is just not personal relationships. This is even in business. You need to know who's sitting behind that suit. I don't care what his check, check in account say. Who is his God? Because eventually he's going to reverence his God my God. I'm going to skip a little bit and just talk a little bit about idols, but this is going to have to be a part two. What's my time? I'm out. <laughs> the children of Israel was God's people, but they had an Egypt mentality. They had an Egypt intellect. 
Now, I'm using Egypt. See, when you took a walk on the wild side, what you didn't know, you just think you went into a relationship. You just think you went into a, a, a fantasy of, of, of intimacy. But what you don't understand is that there was a transfer of spirits there. And although you left that person and although you cut it off because you came to your senses, now there's a need for deliverance. And that's where you got to move the legal right because you came in covenant with them. You made a covenant with them and it's got to be broken. That's why you can't get their smell away from you. That's why you keep thinking about them. That's why the enemy make you think, oh, the Lord wants me to go back and get her saved. No, she was a witch then and she's one now. She hasn't changed her God. She still don't like your God. It doesn't matter. Okay. All right. So what is a spiritual idol? Let's go to Colossians 2 and 3 and 2. Set your affection upon things that are above, not on things of the earth. See, when you have these idols, idols can slip in. The main thing that an idol does is challenge God's sovereignty and offer you a place to believe something else other than God. So all of a sudden you need something and you're just going to start looking to Egypt. <laughs> I'm going to find somebody. I, somebody got to help me with these kids. Somebody got to do this or whatever. But you know what? That's the idol. Because the idol make you believe in something, anything other than God. It's a substitute. Who is a substitute? Is the substitute your mother? Is it your husband? Is it your wife? Who is it? Why don't you choose God? Remember when you keep your heart bent to God? That's what happens. If you keep your heart bent to God then you begin to draw to him first. Idols go against the intelligence of God. They make you think how they want you to think. They go against the mind of God. Idols also go against the thinkings, the planning, and the call of God. An idol can be anything that you put before God. Idols bring forth another mind with hidden heart desires. So when this idol comes in, they make promises, and next thing you know, you in all kind of stuff. And before you know it, you're against the thinking, you're against the plans. And next thing you know, the call all jacked up. Now you don't know if you're called. All of a sudden, I was called. I don't know. I'm not a prophet no more. I, the prophet's on sabbatical. No, I've had pe prophets to tell me that. Oh, I'm just, I'm like, well, you're not a pa you, you, wait, you're not a pastor no more? I said, did you get a promotion? No, 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 I'm not, no. Oh, I'm just taking a rest. I'm on sabbatical. You don't sabbatical from God. You don't. Idols bring forth another mind opposite from the mind of God. And when idols come in, those demons flip those people's mind. You would never know that they were even saved at all. Idolatry extends beyond just worshiping of images of false gods. See, you don't understand. The Israelites going to tell us about this today. Idolatry is a matter of the heart. It's when your heart starts looking to the other God. You know, normally there was one time you, you heard you and said, God, I need you. Lord, I need you. But now you're saying, oh, I know, I know who's going to fix this for me. First thing you're doing, you're dialing that number. I need you to fix this. I have this problem. Idolatry is a matter of the heart associated with pride, self-centeredness, greed, gluttony, based on Philippians 3 and 19, and a love of possessions, things, Matthew 6 and 24. The first commandment is to have no other God before him. No other God. That's Exodus 20 and 3. You know, the Bible talks about idols were constructed from images of the worship. You know, when you get to this point that you love something so much, you know, you can love your kids. A woman struggles in birth with a kid, and she usually has a special love for that child. And not because she chose them over the other one, is she almost lost that one. So she has to balance but see, you gotta be like you gotta be like Samuel's mom and bring that baby back to the Lord. And he was the giver, and you have to know that the giver is gonna keep that baby. And you set it back on the altar. Now, the mentioning of other God's names, do you know that that was a that was a major thing? You ain't supposed to even mention another God's name based on Exodus 23 and 13. 
So some of y'all talking about y'all went and got your horoscope done. You let somebody read your palm. All of that. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, what they say? Zodiac. I'm a Libra. I'm a this. What are you doing? You ain't all of that. You, I'm a scorpion. Who want to be that? <laughs> Scorpio is mean. Who wants to be that? Duh. Okay, let's move on. I'm going to give you a list of, of idols, and then I'm going to stop. Idols invite the spirit of worry. Idols take your face off of God. See, when your heart is bent towards God, you're pulling on the now faith. So now that supernatural faith comes alive. But when you go bent towards an idol... Oh, it brings the spirit of worry, frustration. You're looking for comfort. Now, idol, idols instead of the true and living God was like, it will bring a spiritual attack. All of a sudden, you got all kinds of attacks. Because now you got the God Jehovah here, and now you're inviting something else. So now you go and deal with Moloch. You don't even know he's come from a Moloch, right? Or she is one of the, serving one of them, you know, like, uh, you know... <laughs> Solomon with all the wives and stuff, right? All kinds of gods. He didn't know what was in them. They served child sacrifice, and then he he dealing with the, the, the Jehovah. How are you gonna have the Lord God Jehovah inside a covenant with a Moloch, somebody who believes in Baal? So that means certain times of the month they go and sacrifice some kids. Hope is not yours. That's their belief. Okay. When you believe in God, there's a confidence that comes. A supernatural confidence that's like powered up. Do you hear me? Nobody can stop you. You don't even know where you get the now faith from. It's, it's, and then once you take that step into that faith, it's like a new world you live in. So now you walk in this walk of faith. You no longer have affection for God whenever you don't let an idol in. The idols steal your faith. They steal your affection for God. And idols cause you to worry. Do you know that worry is a sin and it brings in unbelief? 25 idols you must track down. King Josiah, I call him, he was a demon slayer. He was the king. Now, you have to know in the word of God, there were some kings that did everything after the sight of God. Then they had some of them who didn't do. Their fathers may have had that they did what was in the right in the sight of God. But then they came along and said, no, we're going to do something totally different. Gotcha. Yes. But he was different. He was different. And that would be Second Chronicles 34 and verses 3 through 4. Now, once they appointed him king, you have to understand that the people would appoint them. And then they would deal with their qualifications. But you have to understand, God still heard the people. That was really important. Just like when they wanted Saul to be a king, that it's real important with people. You know, now we think, well, the people's voice is nothing. But at this time, it really meant something. And God didn't ignore the people. He gave guidance to the leaders. And then the king would have the responsibility of making sure that God's will was done. Well, he found um, in the Lord's house, there was, what's his name? Let me see. Um, Hilkiah was the priest that found the book of the law. And Josiah got that book and he followed everything. He went in there and cleaned everything out. Those of you that are fearful of witchcraft, this scripture is going to be for you. You need to go study this. Study the king of Josiah. He was real to be a blessing to you. Because he went in, he got all the soothsayers, he cleaned everything out. Those of you all that don't think witchcraft's going to end, oh, it will end. God's got a place for them. Yeah, he's got a place for them. Now, most people are looking for comforts when they have idols. Idols make you comfortable. Come fix me. Yeah, give me the easy way out. Come fix me. Idols cause you to be frustrated because you can't control. You're full of stress. Because, you know, my money not right, I can't control. See, but that's because you're not having the now faith. Idols make you unaware that they are even entered your life. Because, see, you've lost your passion. 
So you don't know they slipped in. You're saying, well, prophetess, I was just having a conversation. You know, we was just talking about the baby while he's slipping Moloch in you. And now all of a sudden, you're not reading as much. You won't hear the word of wisdom or nothing. Anger and stress enters a comfort. See when people won't be comfortable? Do you know work for the kingdom is not comfortable? No, it's not. It's not. So what kind of idol is in your heart? Let me give you a list. I'm not going to go through this. I'll, I'll probably do a part two of this and I'll go back to these idols part. So one would be your mother could be an idol. Money, material things, your job. Your status on the job, physical appearance, entertainment, the need for sex, comfort. Yes, the need for sex. Like they get totally absorbed, addicted with it to the point it ain't even normal in the marriage. It becomes a God. Comfort and your appearance. Your phone, technology. How many phones is messed up marriages? You should hear my office. Prophetess, she's just on the phone constantly. She go to bed with the phone. She wake up with the phone. I don't get no pillow talk. I don't know if they think I'm Dr. Ruth or somebody's supposed to come fix everything. I don't know. I'm like, okay, well, we need to get the phone from her. We, we, we need to figure out why she's on the phone. And then we talk to her. Now, why are you on the phone? Because he's trying to get pillow talk, and you won't talk to him. And who you talking to in the bedroom? And then she mad at me because he didn't told the business, right? Like my life, huh? Love for your family. Do you know you can be so absorbed with your family that you can't even balance? Do I say let church overrule? No, but I do believe God loves the family unit, but everything in balance. Too much of just all husband, too much of just all wife. She going to think she queen of the castle. Got to be balanced. Everything needs to be balanced. Your service in the church, you need that because when you need deliverance and and, and she, your wife done flipped out. You better keep that past in your, in your back pocket. <laughs> so you better be faithful because you're going to need her to help get her delivered. Okay. All right. I know I'm in the house. Y'all can pretend if not. It's okay. Influence or fame. Your own home or your car. Your body. Or care for your children. Sometimes people are just totally ridiculous with their children. Come on now. You got to balance it. God gave you a husband too. Don't forget the husband. Because you didn't give the children, now you done forgot the husband. Everything in balance. I'm going to stop here. This has been great. Let's give God some glory. I pray that you've been blessed. Come on, let's give Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. Ooh, rabashi. Somebody reminds me when I go back, I'm going to start at idols. Right with the, uh, Egypt. That's what we're going to do idols. All right. So I have a special something I'm going to do today. We're going to turn the lights down. I'm going to allow the online people to ask questions or let me deal with them in some way. Now, how am I supposed to do this? How do I see them? Okay. Oh. Oh, you going to bring them up or okay. Like one at a time. Okay, I can't see the name, so I'm trying to figure this out. Oh, isn't this wonderful? Don't you just love your little technology people? They know how to fix everything, huh? Let me say this. So last night, I was sitting with my staff, and I thought, I said, hey, let me just over some things that I was going to teach today. I was all, had a whole, everything. And I just thought I was going, you know, because I was going to go to bed. I'm done. Just need to permeate in the anointing and let God drop. When I finished with them, he said that was for them, not for these people. And I had to come up with another message today. He said, I'm going to prophetically deal with the house before you get there. So do not take this message lightly. Go back and listen to it. Pull the scriptures up. Let go through the pain. It's okay. But get the wisdom. Because there is a, a life amount of wisdom that's in it. 
and apply it to your life. You know, I love people that are strapped in the word. I love it. So I do. But one of the things that does not impress me, if you can't apply it. Okay, great. I think it's wonderful that you can go from, you know, Genesis to Revelation, but you can't apply it. The word is to be applied to our lives. We're supposed to live it. When you get ready to make a decision, you're supposed to be able to pull them scriptures and apply that thing. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Isn't this wonderful? I get to look at everybody's faces. Um, is it, are they going to rotate? They are? This is wonderful. Okay. Oh, I can't hit one. I don't, okay. What am I trying to do? Okay, Courtney Bond. Can you bring her up for me? Andy da 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 she. Well, let me say this to the online people. I was thinking about you today. A, a, a young, wonderful woman was driving me today. And I told her how grateful I was that our online audience is so faithful. They are. They are faithful. They are givers. They are seeds. They're so faithful. And I was really thanking the Lord for them. And thanking the Lord for blessing me with people that would hear what the Lord has to say out of my mouth. You know, I just want to, I, you know, you got to just be grateful for what the Lord has given you. And I'm just, I just want you all to know that I appreciate you and that your love and your faithfulness is just, it's not just going unnoticed. And I, I do appreciate you more than you can ever know. So this time I'm going to dedicate to you and then we're going to do the offering and then we're going to do our healing rooms after the offering if you if you have to go I do understand but we're going to have healing rooms because there are people who come from great distances to be able to get free and we have to honor that okay and um, sometimes people just like to sit in the presence because typically when deliverance moves, there's a glory that stays here. You don't always need me to touch you or talk to you, you know. You need to. Okay, the tech team say you have to turn your camera on in order for me to be able to speak to you. You have to turn your camera on, okay? Okay. Can you bring up Courtney Vaughn for me? I don't, she's not on? Oh, she's at, she's at work. Okay, okay, Courtney. Let me just say this to you. I just want you to know that I got your email. I was just waiting for the Lord to tell me when I could speak with you. Um, you, you know, that, that's that prophetic thing. I've got to say what he say when he says. Um, I just want you to do this for me. If I could just get you to draw closer to me so that I can be able to minister to you. There's a season coming up where the Lord said deliverance is going to be your portion. And it's going to be amazing for even your gifts. So I want you to know during this time you need to devour yourself into that word. And ask the Lord to make the word come alive in you. I want you to know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And I send warring angels to that home in every corner of the room. And I decree and declare that peace shall abide there. There's two or three things that you got on the table of your heart that need to be taken care of. And the Lord said to tell you only in his time. But he said he hears you and he sees you. Know this, don't worry about your daughter, for the Lord says she has a special hand upon her and an angel that walk with her day by day. God bless you. Have a wonderful time, and God bless you at work. Blessings. That's one of my daughters of the heart. All right, so do I just pick which person? Isn't this wonderful? All right. I just think this is so amazing. All right, it's switching on me here. Okay. How, Lenora Bright, I think that, yeah, Lenora Bright, can you unmute her and see if she has a question for me? If you have a question, why don't you text? If you have a question, I can answer your question as well. Okay, hi, Lenora, how are you? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? I can. I sure can. Do you have any questions about today's message? 
I don't. I've, oh. been, I've been watching you for a while now, and I'm learning. <laughs> and, um, like you said, uh, like-minded people need to be uh, around like-minded people, but I feel like I can grow. I have been you know, listening to you and picking up some tools. And well, that's to great. Do. What state are you from? Louisiana, where I'm I slide out. Oh, really? Isn't that wonderful? I hope you will be visiting us. When we'll be coming back next week. I would love to see your face. Yes, it, ma'am. I, was, I came once to visit. Did you? Yes. Let me ask you this. What would you like the Lord to do for you? Oh, well, um... Monday, da 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 I guess I just need, um... More I need direction. directions um, mm-hmm. on my job. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, a lot that I try to do, and I feel like a lot of this, take, you know, you, you basically kind of ministered on it tonight. Okay, to that's take, good. That when you said that um, people will come and try to take away what you basically what God has given, I, you know, then maybe maybe it was God, maybe it wasn't, but. Mm-hmm. It kind of bothers me when I kind of come up with something, a plan or whatever, create maybe a program. And mm-hmm. Can you tell me what your calling is? Do you know what you're called of God to do? Um, I just love people in general. And um, I'm more of a, um, uh, I don't know, I guess more like an evangelist. So I just help. I just give. Um, mm-hmm. Let me- give it money, uh, just give mm-hmm. whatever I can give, the mm-hmm. time. Um, okay. So yeah. you do know you're talking to a prophet is correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah. So I never ask a question for no reason. So that's not what I hear. I do hear that it's time to come to the front because the Lord has a word in your mouth that there's some people, they're going to need to hear what you have to say. Don't run from the call, but not many days from now, the Lord's going to start dealing with you in a different area of prophecy. But it's going to work even on the job. Know that on the job, you're monitored. Yeah. I hear, I see great excellence with you and there's much jealousy, but the hand of the Lord is with you and that anointing is going to begin to move even on that job and cause you to really soar in a great place. So just be open to it and just say, yes, Lord, and watch that anointing begin to permeate. Know this, that no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. It won't work. It won't work. It won't work. Now, I can tell you this. If you just get by that door when you get walk in work and walk, step in it in the name of Jesus, and you covered, girl. Amen. Praise you God. are. Blessings to you. God bless you. Thank you much. All right. I'm learning to do this. Okay. They have to have the camera on. Okay. There's a Duncan, um, Amani Duncan. No cameras on. Oh, what about Danielle? Hi there. How are you? What's her name? Amani. Amani, can you turn your your mic on? How are you? <laughs> what would you What would you like What would you like the Lord to do for you today? Okay. All right. Well, we'll definitely be interceding for you. Um, I want you to get real faithful because I hear shaking coming and you're going to have to be strapped. Do you feel with the Holy Spirit? I am. You are? Do you use your tongue language? I do. Okay. Do you have my book? I do. Actually, you signed you, it. You, <laughs> You're doing good, girl. You're doing good. You're doing good. I, I, I just need you to, to war up with that book. Just war up with that book. But know that it's going to be well and things will end well. You know, to go into greatness, there will always be battles. You do know that, right? Yeah. But I see the Lord sending you help. 
I see him sending you help. Yeah. Do you have a project that you're getting ready to do? I see something forming. Do you have a project or what do you do? I, I just, well, I'm, a, I'm about to launch uh, my online ministry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm about to launch that ministry. Okay. Mande o rebo sheke. Mm-hmm. Tell me what type of ministry is it? Well, it's basically words of encouraging. Mm -hmm. And um, I call it a piece of gold. Mm-hmm. Okay. I want you to be very, very faithful. Make sure you step out at the right time. Make sure you've dealt with all old bondages before you step out. Because when you do step out, I see glory on it. But you have to make sure whenever you step out and something's with glory, you have to make sure that all the insides is all together. And not when I say together, let me, that's not a good word. Uh, just make sure things are aligned with God so that you can rank up if the enemy tries to roll at you. Because every time you see anything with glory on it, that means it's brilliance. God's pleased with it, but the enemy going to be mad. But that's okay. Let him be mad because I actually see two or three things getting ready to be birthed. So you continue to plan and just make sure you stay in season. Who is your covering? Do you have a covering? Okay. You do? Okay, that's yes. good. Are you in line with your covering? Uh, it's like that. Okay. I can say in line with my covering. Okay. Meaning, like, are you, you know, because you, you know, whenever you launch something, you just need people to protect you, and usually your covering just gives that backing to you. That's all. But, you know, oh, uh, yes, yes. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. Well, I see glory upon it, but just make sure that you have everything in place, all ducks in a row. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How often do you fast? Uh, well, I just came off of a fast in January. Okay. So my goal is to start fasting um, every two months before, well, I can't say Okay. Yeah, if you're getting ready, I don't know who your covering is, and that probably would have a lot to do with it, but I'm just going to say to you that anything that has glory on it, you should fast at least two days a week because you've got to keep the yes. flesh dead so you could hear because you're going to have to make decisions. You're going to be joining with people. You're going to have a lot of entertaining to do, and you got to make sure you're strapped and Fasting will cause you to hear, okay? So that's just a word of wisdom for you. Just flow as the Lord gives you. But if you're getting ready to launch, please make sure fasting is a lifestyle. Got it? Yes, ma'am. All right. God bless. Have a wonderful day. All right? See that lady with the blue jacket on? It's going to be okay. It is. It's going to be okay. And it's not what it looks like. Yeah, it's, it's going to be okay. It's going to end well. It, it will end well and you're going to be in a safe place. Yeah, I know the turmoil is not good, but it's going to end well. I want you to remember those words. I'm not saying them because I have no clue as what's going on. But I know what I feel the bubbling in my belly of what God's saying. He said to tell you that it was going to be well. So I want you to hear that and know that. Hear it as the word of the Lord, not my voice, but hear it as his voice. Okay? All right. Y'all just give God some glory. Glory. Okay. Can you pull Sophia up for me? What is her last name? Johnson. Hi, lady. How are you? 
Hi, Prophetess. Oh, I miss you so much. I miss you. I wish I could get a hug. I miss you. Oh, I wanted to come this weekend, but uh, it's not working out. Oh, my goodness. I'm trying to get back to Florida. I'm working on it. I am. I just want you to know that you are loved and you are missed, and I did get your email. I did. I did. Nikki Oribo Sheke. As a bubble of the word is getting ready to bubble out of your belly. Mm -hmm. Do you study about the Jews a lot? Do you study? Yes. I keep, every time I see you, I see, <laughs> okay, I don't know. I, you know, I just say what I see. I hear the Jews. What, do you, what are you studying with that? Um, well, everything, but mostly right now, I'm trying to focus on the time and the season and mm -hmm. step in what he's doing month by month. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to have Jada to put you on my schedule. Let's have a conversation. I, when I saw your email, it had nothing to do with Jews, but the, that's all I kept hearing. So I said I was going to call you and say that. But I think I've gotten a revelation now. Yeah, that's good. I'll put you on my calendar and let's just talk for a little bit. Tell her the best times for you. Check, Thank you. Text the ministry phone and just tell her what's the best time. Sophia, okay. I want you to know that you are loved. Thank you. God bless you. God bless. That woman is my heart, huh? I know everybody say everybody her heart, right? No, everybody not my heart. I just want you to know that they're not. They're not. Nigel Collins. Can you bring Nigel Collins up? Mickey Radashi. Hi, Naja. How are you? Hello, Prophetess. How are you? <laughs> oh, my God. I love your voice, girl. <laughs> what would you like the Lord to do for you today? I just want to know, am I doing what he wants me to do as far as career, schooling, like the time and season of my life is, you know, his will, not my will. Mm -hmm. That's all. So let me ask you a question. Are you in Egypt? Are you in the wilderness? <laughs> are you in the promised land? Which one are you? Because I just need to know how to ask. I know how to, I need to know how to answer you. I feel, I feel, I wouldn't say Egypt, but I just, I know it's not the promised land. I know he has more for me Got it. than I want to walk into. But, but you're on your way there, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. 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 I would go on a three-day fast, and I would focus on nothing other than killing the flesh and wanting to know what he wants to know for you. I wouldn't pray about nothing else. And I would get, be like Jacob. I would get in his face, and I wouldn't move until he hears me. Trust me, they're going to bring hamburgers and potato chips and everything else before you. But this fast is going to be a deal breaker because it's going to open you up to know where you are. Because when I hear you, I hear like Barnabas, you know, they fasted before they went out. So I want to be praying that, you know, the right thing comes. Are you married? Yes, ma'am. You are. How does hubby yes. feel about your career and your ministry? He's, uh, he's on board, whatever. He likes what I'm doing now. I'm That's counselor now. Women's counselor. He... He's, you know, he loves it. I'm working. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Praise the Lord that you're working. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let me pray blessings upon your household and your husband and you. Oh, my God. I pray love overflowing for you in the name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord cause you to be a woman of much wisdom, that you will know how to bring comfort to him through your bosom. And I thank the Lord for that, that you are a wise woman and the Lord births a new dimension of wisdom for you, that the Lord will cause you to hunger for the prophetic in a new way. Oh, my God, I hear dreams. Do you dream? If not, you're getting yeah. ready. Yes. Okay, so you're definitely a dreamer. You're definitely a dreamer. Um, anything with your last, any warning dreams or anything? Yes, I saw war. I saw um, troops being, uh, I heard dispatched. Mm -hmm. I heard, I saw them fueling up tanks, mm -hmm. like army tanks. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have any fear when I, in my dream, and I didn't have any fear when I woke up, but mm -hmm. I knew it was something to it because. So 
So now we need exactly. so now we need to see if that's an end time dream or whether or not you couldn't go through a war, but you wasn't fearful and you were ready and strapped. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to see if it's a parable. Yeah. I don't know if you're gonna be on online. What state are you from? Indiana, wait oh. for you to come. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Me too. I'm right there with you, girl. But if but if you can consider being online, I'm going to deal with the dreams and I hear dreams are going to really help you. They're really going to help you. I pray a special anointing upon you even now. And Lord, I send a blessing to that home and I thank you for the angels that are dispatched there. Thank you that every need would be met, overflow. I hear bank. I want you to save up because there's an opportunity coming. There's a door going to open, but you're going to need money. So bank up. Don't, now that you're working, just bank up, okay? It's going to be a blessing. I see you dealing with a lot of money, like you're actually dispersing it. So I don't know if that's a, something you do in your job or in your home, but you're dispersing it, and there's great wisdom with it. I'll be praying for you for sure. What's your husband's name? John. John? Yes. Father, I send a blessing to John in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I just thank you for overflow. Thank you for oneness in that home. And I thank you for the ministry you're going to birth. And I give you glory for it. Show forth your power in Jesus' name, and so shall it be. God bless you. You've been a delight to speak you. with. And I just pray that we meet one day. Yes, got to make it happen. God, we, we, it's going to happen. I promise it will. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. You too. Too. Bye-bye. Oh, I -bye. was it was a Latanya Hill. Oh God, you are you are you are you are you hounding me online as well? Oh my God! <laughs> no, you're not. Oh my God, I can't get rid of this lady. I love you so much. I love your family. How can I pray for your family, or what is it that you need the Lord to do? Listen, I done learned not to ask. I'm gonna let you be led. <laughs> She's been in one of our services before. <laughs> How's your daughter-in-law? Amazing. <laughs> oh, that's Amazing. wonderful. Oh, my God. Tell her I said to enjoy that beautiful ring. Oh, I will. I look forward to seeing, meeting your son, okay? Oh, we're definitely going to get him to you. He's trying to figure out the time to get off work. Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. So, I, um... I see you've, you've, you've got another level of deliverance going on. I see you yes, breaking through. Oh, this is wonderful. Healing has come to that home, huh? Oh, yeah. my goodness. This is wonderful. I'm excited for you. I look forward to seeing you again. Yes, ma'am. Hold on to that deliverance because it's evident. I want you to know mm -hmm. that. Work the book, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, blessings. Kiss your daughter-in-law for me. I will. Okay. All right, bye-bye. Um, did I, yeah, I have this anointing me. I, I don't make people get married, but I know how to make them strap it up right. Break all kind of yokes and get demons out the house and everything. I'm so excited. I love that family. Uh, let me do another one. Le, uh, Lachey Smith. Hi, Lachey. Hey. Okay, Louisiana and Charlotte people are hounding me. Okay, I just want y'all to know that. They are following me. How are you, girl? I am doing well. How are you? Boy? I'm doing wonderful. Kiss your husband for me. Oh, I don't have you. You're speaking him to existence. I don't have my husband. Oh, okay. Thank you for speaking him into existence for me. Okay, oh, wait, hold up. Wait, I'm not speaking people's husbands. Hold on. Put a full face for me. Can you put a full It Is it going to be just my, oh, I have to do this. Give me one minute. Let me see if I got you mixed up with somebody else. I want you, to, can you put me full face? She's just like, yes, yeah, speaking to husband. Hold up, wait a minute, because I don't want her to go get married and come back and tell my prophet is you spoke this. Uh, I'm very, uh, look. Uh, you know, whatever God said. I, I don't know. 
Okay, no, 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 Okay, we're trying to do this. Let me see. How about this? Okay, yes. I had you I had you mixed up with someone else. I'm so sorry. Don't you know, not saying that that's not so, but I don't need you to don't go get married talking about I've smoked nothing in you. Now what you need me to pray, because you know I you know I consider that a very important subject. I don't just go hooking up people. <laughs> How are you? What can I pray for you for other than a husband? <laughs> <laughs> now she got that husband thing going on. Did, did you, did you ever, wait, did you ever listen? But did, mm -mm, I'm not in this. I'm not in this. Have you listened to my three year dating plan? Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm not dating right now, so but uh, whenever I start, that's something that's going to be a source for me, a resource for me, just to make sure because I've had some um, some interesting people, and I honestly don't want to fall down that same road again. So, mm -hmm. so let so let me so let me ask you this. Um, so how did you get in that Egypt? Because I would oh, yeah. I would love to minister to you in that. Because if it keeps, if it kept happening, how did you get there? Um, it was because of me, um, not having self-esteem, uh, low self-esteem, believing that whatever they did is just what I was supposed to say. So it, it was more so rejection. So the whole, and so, and so the whole, blocking. that whole, yeah. we, we need to get that whole field. Um, what about intimacy with God? How, where are you there? Oh, I'm, I'm reading more, of mm -hmm. the, like I'm getting woke at Pacific time at night, so I do take that time to read the Bible, just get in his presence. Um, do, you do you have my book? Do you have my book? I surely do. <laughs> Right here what you going to do with this one? She seems like she's my neighbor or somebody, right? Okay. Let me ask you this. So let me ask you this. If I send you a code to get the 17-day challenge of knowing God intimately, will you do it and then email me when you finish it? Yes. I yes. promise you, if you really want deeper intimacy, that 17-day challenge, I made that e-course for a very special daughter of my heart. And I'm telling you, it, it periodically she goes back to it, but it, it will make a difference, I promise. I tell you what, can you text the ministry phone and uh, one of our assistants is going to get it and send a picture of yourself as well as of you right now, and then they'll send you a code. I'd love for you to do that. That 17-day challenge is really going to work. Okay. All right. It's been a blessing speaking to you. I'm trying to decide if I'm going to speak to this husband right now. Um, I'm trying to think if I need to come in agreement with this. Let, let me, you do the 17, you do the 17 day challenge. Email me and tell me how it was, but make sure you send your picture. Okay. So I can remember right. you. And, and then we're going to decide if I'm going to decree this husband in, in this season of your life. Okay. All right. <laughs> February. Okay. Um, and everything works out to where I'm able to. Drive. Now, where are you coming from? Um, Horn Lake, Mississippi. Okay. Ride, okay. Okay. Ride. Well, I pray that you're able to come. I believe it's going to be def definitely God's timing when you do. People always come to the service at the time that they need to come. But I'd love to meet you and make sure I know who you are, okay? I got you, girl. All right. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Let me, let me deal with these in the room here. I got two more, and then we're going to deal with the room because I feel like the room is pulling me. The lady with the white jacket on, can you stand for me? Get in the middle for me. You belong in the front. You don't belong in the back of nothing. Nothing. Upgrade. Upgrade every area of your life. Do you hear me? Nothing. You're supposed to take the back seat to nothing. You're not made for it. And don't let anybody put you in that. Not in anointing, not in relationships, not in how they deal with you. You do not have to settle. And whoever put that in your head, you tell them, I said, that demon's coming up and out today. Because you will step into the new of what God has called for you. You're not supposed to be in the back. What do you do for a living? I need you to make it one of the best. 
Do you hear me? One of the best. Research it. Do your research. Actually, I'm going to give you instructions. I want you to find somebody to make you a business plan to upgrade that to one of the best. Then you, buy, you take that plan. might cost you about two or $3,000 if it's, they really know what they're doing and cert certified and all that kind of stuff. Just make sure it's strapped up. And then you believe God. Because I see somebody going to give you favor. Somebody's going to see your heart, and they're going to give you favor, and you're going to already have the vision just ready. See, when opportunity come and wealth come, people want you ready. If you need to be ready, you need to be ready in your heart, in your look, and how you present yourself, your articulation, knowing what you know. But you, this backseat thing, do not settle. And I'm going to pray for the Lord to sweep clean anything or anybody attached to you in that business or anything that should not be in there, that the Lord would move them so you can go it on and fly. Sometimes the Lord didn't let things go forth because you had wrong people attached to you. And if he would have put the multi-million there, oh, they would have jacked it up for sure. And then it would have been on your name. And that's the word of the Lord. I don't know what I just said. I want you to came straight from the heavens. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank God Jesus knows. Hallelujah. Ah, Can you turn the lights back on in the room? And wonderful lady right now, don't sit down. You can stay stand up. Turn the lights on for me. Other lights on. What would you like the Lord to do for you? What did you come here for? Uh-oh. Wait, are you in the Egypt, the wilderness, or the promised land? Praise the Lord. Let's celebrate her for coming out of Egypt. <laughs> stay out. Got it? You stay out. Yeah, you don't belong in Egypt. Stay out. Now, remember how you got there. Keep that as a vivid picture. And remember, one of the things to know when true deliverance has, is at your door is you begin to get to a place where you could back up from it and you go, oh, man, I, I, that was wrong. I should have saw that. Oh, my God. She tried to tell me. My mom tried to tell me. And when that starts happening, true deliverance is on the rise. It is. I don't know why. Does that information help you? It does. It does. Where are you from? Columbia, South That's right. South Carolina. I just want you to know that I'm so happy that you came today. And I want you to stay out of Egypt. And if you struggle, you find us. Just text the ministry number. Say, I'm from South Carolina. Remember me? <laughs> and say, I need some wisdom. But I'm getting ready to email prophetess. Can you tell her, look at that email? If the Lord allows you and I want you to seek his face, why don't you become a part of my mentorship? Think about that. Pray about it. And I do mean pray about it because everybody can't take me on a daily basis. You know, you understand? Like sometimes they can't take me and I understand that I'm not even offended. Sometimes I don't like me. You understand? I'm just like this word of the Lord can be like a sword, you know, but I've got to do what I got to do because I want to live long and I want to please God. Also, I want to pull people out. You, know, you, want, you want to know why I'm telling you that? Because I'm praying that the Lord pull you all the way out today. You didn't come all this way for nothing. Yeah. Ooh, I don't live in the spirit of regret. Oh, Lord, I'm asking you to let your power engulf her today. Me on the whole Oh, and the spirit of the Lord is going to hug you today. And you will know that he is with you. You're going back with something, honey. You're going back with something. Oh, the Lord say forgiven. Look at me. Forgiven. Do you hear me? Forgiven and washed. See, I, we probably need to do grave clothes, huh? I keep hearing grave clothes. Y'all going to get up and sing grave clothes if we do grave clothes? Some people looking like, what is grave clothes? <laughs> You're out. Don't look back. Got it? Don't look back. That's greater. And don't worry about, don't worry about that. You didn't lose anything. You don't get it back. 
You're not even going to lose the, the years. You know, God can even recoup the years. Did you know that? You know, I've had time where the Lord literally let me double back and literally set me up. So I didn't lose anything. You know, God will even keep your age and your beauty just to show you that I've kept you. Did you know that? Oh, I serve a supernatural God. Oh, Rabasha. Monday, Rabashi. Baby, I see you ministering to many people about that very same season of life. Oh, Monday, Rabasha. Oh, Yabasha. In the name of Jesus. Oh, there's a healing angel getting ready to hit this place. Online, I love you all so much, but I'm, I'm going to have to get ready to deal with the room. Look at me. Wash. This is my eraser. Imagine an eraser. He's erasing. Now go on and do great things for God. It's validated. But I bet if I ask you how you got in that Egypt, it's because you needed validation. So today you are validated. Nikim. So what if I even told you that you will even be validated as a prophet? For prophecy is in your belly. It's you just you just under a pile of regret and stuff right now. Yeah. You're like Elijah hiding in the cave right now. That's okay. You coming out that cave and you're gonna split you're gonna split the rivers. Oh yeah. It's going to come up on you. Sure it will. And the last prophet didn't lie to you. Now I have no clue what that meant. But they didn't lie to you. And that will be the word of the Lord for you. Blessings. There's a lady behind the gentleman. She has a white sweater on, I think. Hi, can you stand for me? Is the strangest thing. You have such a glow on you. Mohora. What would you like the Lord to do for you? I'm trying to see who that is. Do I know this person? I do. Wow, you have changed. You come see me, girl. You don't got to live it overnight. You don't look like last Sunday. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that is you. Wow. Well, the Lord has done something. Let him love on you. Lift your hands before the Lord. Lord, let your power and your love rain upon her today. God, show your power. Amy, put your hand right here. Every wound, every pain, I say cease, die, and never come back again. Sweetheart, you're going under true deliverance. Whatever you got rid of, whatever you came from under, that was one of the best things you've ever done because it's so evident over you. That the Lord is with you. And Father, I bless you today. In Jesus' name. Give a hug for me, Amy. <laughs> oh, let's celebrate. She didn't look that way last week. I didn't even know who she was. Oh my God, this is awesome and amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, we're going to get ready because we're going to, let me see, what healing rooms are we going to be doing today, Amy? Those who want to be filled with the Holy Spirit or need your tongue language activated or felt like they've lost it and they need to get it back, just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. It's okay. It's okay. We're going to stomp the devil together. You gonna get your act, yeah, yeah, baby. We just bring you through repentance, and and God will do what He wants to do. All right, great. Um, we will also have rejection and abandonment, and we'll also have those who can't forgive. Okay, in any part of it, you might say, "Well, prophetess, I've been here before. I've been here before, prophetess, and I'm here again." It's okay. It's all right. We're just gonna help you get to that place. 
We're going to help you get to that place. There's a man in the back. Can you stand for me, sir? No, that's you. Yes. What would you like the Lord to do for you? Directions and guidance. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What do you do for a living? Mm -hmm. Do you have a business in your heart? I see glory on it. I don't know what it is, but I don't see what you're doing now. I need you to plan that. Can you? I mean, I want you to plan like as if you got the three million in the bank. You plan it and the Lord's going to sit down with you and give you all the ideas. Do the research. Do what you need to do. Got it? Don't do it back door. Do what you need to do. So the Lord says he's, there's something that faithfulness is coming before you. And he said he's going to bless you. And I don't know, did you serve someone and you were faithful or you're faithful to God? You're faithful in your tithings? I don't know. Some form of faithfulness or to your parents is any particular? Mm -hmm. Well, he's heard you today. I want you to know he's heard you today. And he's also going to attack that lack. There's a current need now. He's going to attack that. And the Lord wants you to know that he's heard you today. And he just said to stand you up to let you know that I know where you are. And I want you to know that your prayers are not in vain and he does hear you. But I need you to be a, a legacy wealth person. I need you to look for head. And don't stop till streams of income come. But just remember this. Serve the kingdom in it. Got it? Who is your pastor? Okay. I, I need you to find him and just get connected. Stay back. Be, stay, stay where you need to stay. But there's a thirst for something deeper in you. Oh, my God. Like you're almost crying out for more. Lord, it's got to be more than this. And the Lord said he's going to meet that need. In the meantime, just find people like us that's crazy and just love Jesus, okay? And you hang out with us. Because I tell you what, I see there's an oil pouring over your head. You're not anointed to preach, are you? It, there's oil pouring over you. So I don't, uh, are you preaching? Oh, there's a fire you're going to hit your belly. Do you, are you walking in deliverance or tell me where that is? You're not, you're not a Jonah, are you? I don't deal with Jonas. I don't deal with Jonas, and I don't deal with people that don't pay tithes and they curse. I don't, no, ask my staff. I will not give, no. I'm serious. I'm, I don't hook up with crazy people that steal from God because they're they going to bring a curse. But I don't deal with Jonas either, and I need you to get together. All right, are you staying for the healing room? Yeah, you need to stay because we're going to get that Jonah out of you. And forgive them church hurt people. Do you hear me? Start right now. You just start right. I don't have a, a special corner for that, but I'm going to make sure we and you are going to deal with that. Yes, yeah, so that way you can go on and let that fire and let that oil pour over your head. Because truly you are anointed to preach. Okay? Blessings to you. All right. Don't y'all try to fuss at people like that. See, that's, that's, a, that's that mother Zion can do that. Y'all do that, y'all will be in a fight, okay? That came from one of my mentors. One of my mentors had an anointing like that. So let's give God some glory. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notified when new videos are released. Prophetess Miranda's new book called Prophetic War and Decree will teach you how to war and decree for your breakthrough. This book is guaranteed to make you a warrior and step into the place God has called you to be. To purchase the book and get information on upcoming healing and deliverance services and events, make sure to visit our main website at prophetessmiranda.com. If you would like to give to the ministry, visit our website or text the word GIVE to 504-500-4776.